In the first episode of Road to World Record, I taught you how to fold this Dart version of Rival, which is an excellent paper airplane and it's easy to fold. So then in the next episode, I taught you how to fold a hybrid version of the same plane. It's a little bit different, but flies even farther. So the next logical step in that progression is to teach you now how to fold the glider version of Rival, which is an excellent, excellent glider, not very hard to fold. And I do want to point something out about it. This is the plane closest to Suzanne that I've ever designed. Not only does the overall shape look similar, but check out this layer construction. While the layers are on top here and the layers are on the bottom of Suzanne, they are very similar in their construction and therefore the weight distribution of these planes is really similar too. So let's see how far this plane flies and then I'll teach you how to fold it. Now very quickly before we get into the tutorial for Rival, I want to mention that the world record for paper airplane distance was absolutely shattered in December and it is now 289 feet. So congratulations to the guys who managed that. I'll be talking about their journey in greater detail in a future video. But for now, I just want to talk about the implications on this series. I am going to currently pause the Road to World Record series because frankly, I am nowhere near the world record, and that's okay. I've got irons and a ton of fires, some really cool projects coming up, including the Paper Aces Tournament, which is going to be airing starting next weekend, and then every two days I'll be posting a video. So keep your eyes peeled for that. We're gonna have a lot of fun on this channel coming up soon. And with that, let's fold Rival. All you will need in order to fold this paper airplane is an A4 sheet of paper, a ruler, and something to mark with. We're going to begin by folding this right edge to the left edge. Okay, and you can go ahead and open your paper up. And now we're going to fold the top two and a half centimeters of the paper down. So basically measure along one of these edges two and a half centimeters and make a little mark. I've already done that. And I'm going to flip it over and pull this top edge down. Again, just two and a half centimeters. I'm looking for my mark over there, making sure I'm aligned to that, I'm landing my center crease on the center crease. And you just get a little band of paper on the top edge like this. Now I'll go ahead and flip the paper over again. And I'm going to fold this top edge into the middle, just like so. You can leave a tiny little gap between this edge and the middle, and that'll help you out. And you're doing the same thing on the other side as well. Just like so. Now, in the next step, we are measuring once again. You're going to measure along this edge here from that corner right there. And you're measuring two and a half centimeters again and you're just making a little mark at that point. And you're going to want to fold this top edge or this top point rather down to land on the center crease. And the crease you make should go right through this mark you made across the page. So you'll wanna make sure you're controlling these layers as you do this so they don't move too much. Pull down, make sure that the crease you're about to make is going through that mark you made and it should look something like this. Okay, and now you're going to fold this edge here into the center again. And do the same thing on the other side. And then you'll open both of those up and fold this outer edge to that crease you just made. You can leave a tiny gap and that might help. 
tiny gap between the edge and the crease, I mean. Okay, and you can see we're going to be folding in like this, but something's gotta happen first. And here's the idea. When we are going to be folding our plane in half, you can see you've got this little pocket there. And basically you want that pocket to swing backwards as you close the plane in half. And then we're going to be tucking these layers into the space between that pocket and the nose of the plane. If you just close it now, that pocket won't be able to open up when we close the plane by folding it in half. So just make sure that's opening backwards. And I would be folding this in, but I want to show you something while I have the paper like this. Our next step after we tuck these into this pocket is we're basically going to be taking this little extra section here. You can even see this crease and we're going to be folding it over like this. And that is going to serve to lock our plane together once it's all closed up. I want to show you that now because it's a lot more visible than it will be in a second. So I fold this in again. I want it to go into that pocket. I'm folding this into that as well. And I kind of have to fold the plane in half as I do that to get it to work. Like so. Everything's going into that pocket. And now it's gonna be really hard to show you, but I'm just folding that tab over like I said before. And you're actually going to have to make a new crease here. It won't quite align to the existing crease that you have. but you can just pick a direction and fold it in that direction. And you want it to catch these layers tightly like that. And then you can close your plane up and try to massage your layers so they're not curling too much. But you'll notice when you fold the wings here in just a second, this kind of bowing of the wings will kind of resolve itself. So you're going to fold from just above the nose of the plane, very slightly above that point, through the lock that you have. And that's your reference. And the lock is kind of this top edge right there where your layers are all caught together. And you'll do the same thing on the other side and it can help to unfold one wing as you do the other. Just make sure that you land the crease of this wing along the crease of the previous wing. See, I'm looking at that line right there, making my wings the same, folding right through that lock. And now you'll want to make sure that your center crease here isn't pulling dramatically one way or the other. You can kind of line that center crease up right with the thickest layers. And when you flip it over, you can see you've got a really nicely locked plane. And I would say you're good to throw this as is and just see how it's balanced. If you find that you need any up elevator, you can, of course, just bend the back edges of the wings up slightly. Uh, same with dihedral. It can work well pretty flat. So experiment with whether you need to bend the wings up into a Y shape at all. But just like this, it should fly really, really well for you. So thank you so much for watching this video and good luck flying your plane.